we go. Boy Reviews! All right, welcome back to Boring Reviews. Nick here, and I am excited to give you a review for the movie Jalikatu. Now, Jalikatu is a film that Gabe and I reacted to about five months ago or so, quite a ways back. And to be honest, I um, I can't remember what I said in that reaction, but it wasn't a film that I said to myself, oh, I've got to watch that right now. And I remember... At the end of it, thinking it had something to do with cannibalism, which really definitely turns me off as far as storylines go. People in the comment section said, no, it's not cannibalism. But is it at the very end in a small little bit? We'll get to that in a second. So this is a film that is from the Malayalam. Malayalam? I always say that wrong. Industry. Malayalam. There we go. Malayalam. Industry. And after me and Joey did a review for Kumbalunga Nights and our reaction and all that stuff, we got a lot of positive um, reactions from that. And so I decided to check out another one. Went on whatever, I, I think it was Amazon, and it was 90 minutes long. I said, sign me up, watched it last night. So I'm ready to talk to you about Jelly Katu. Before I do, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, check out our Instagram. Don't forget to check out or Patreon if you want to, and all that good stuff. We appreciate all the support. So let's jump right into this review. I am a little hesitant and a little nervous because there is a, I'm not gonna say a huge fan base for this film, but those who are fans seem to be hardcore fans. This is definitely a festival darling of a film. Um, very artistic, and I just don't wanna mess it up. So this movie starts off, um, and since I knew it was Malayalam, I knew it was going to be a, a deep film and there's going to be more to it than meets the eye, a Transformers line. And so I went into it, you know, with my brain turned on just a little higher, which it doesn't go too high. I was at the, ult uh, ult the ultimate max level of like two. But I was trying to see if I could understand all that was going on. And it starts off with this interesting like ticking sound, tick, tick, tick. And it would have someone's eyes closed and then someone's eyes open. All these people were sleeping. Eyes closed, eyes open. Eyes closed, eyes open. And I'm like, okay, what's that about? What's that about? Um, I don't know if it was like 50% of people. Is, is this thing that this movie's going to tell us about? Or if it's about how everyone in this city wakes up at the same time, or at least half of them do. There was a lot going on. And then it went to these different creatures, these different like, insects. And like worms or little snakes in the water and different things moving around, the same ticking noise. And then it went back to people. And then it spent a long time focusing on the moon and, you know, the sunset, the mountain. And it stayed there for a very long time, even after the credits were there. So I was trying to think, and I didn't read anything about this film going into it. And I was trying to think, okay, what was that about? Humans for a while with ticking and then insects. And so I started to think, is this going to compare humans to insects or humans to animals or humans to creatures in some way? And after this movie was over, it seemed like that prediction wasn't too far off once again. This is a crazy film. <laughs> this is an insane movie. Again, it's only 94 minutes. Let's get some, some credit where credit's due here. This is a film that is directed by Ligio Jose. And I'm saying the J, a hard J, because a friend of mine on Instagram told me that's how you pronounce it. Hopefully I'm correct. Ligio Jose Pelisseri. It's written by S. Harish and R. Jayakumar, and is based on a short film called Moist. And it stars Anthony um, V. Shimbin V. J. and Sabuman A. So it had these actors in it, and there was a whole lot more people in the film, and you can call them glorified extras. That had someone that had some, some talking parts, but there really was just a small core of characters. There really was. There was a few storylines going on, small core of characters, but this film was insane. It was bananas, as some people would say, B-A-N-A-N-A-S, as you would hear the cheerleaders cheer sometimes. But um, this movie was crazy. It was a complete visual, captivating type film. It was definitely a festival film. And I, if I'm being honest, I would say that's like maybe my ninth or tenth favorite genre, festival darlings, if you will. The artsy, fartsy I say sometimes that I don't say anymore because they're kind of demeaning. But those artsy films that are giving us 
underlying messages that are right in your face that you have to think about to discover them right in your face, below your or under your nose, so to speak. That's what this film is. This film had a message. Political, I'm not sure if I'd go that far, but definitely had a social message in it. And that overall message, as you see through the film, delivers itself very subtly as it goes on. And I'm not going to lie, when I was done with this film, I did read what other people thought about it because... I know we had some some viewers and some commenters in our reaction video from five months ago that mentioned a lot of great things about it. But, you know, there's going to be a handful of people that like almost every movie out there, whether you like them or not. And so I wanted to see what other people thought about it. And I wanted to see, you know, did this money make movie make money, which it did. Not a huge amount of money, but it made definitely its investment returned. And from listening to other people's reviews, it was very similar. Their understanding of the film to my understanding, so that made me feel pretty good, but I was definitely, the brain was working on overdrive because halfway through this movie, the first 45 minutes, I'm asking myself, what is this movie about? Like, what is the movie about? And that's the main thing about this movie. There really isn't a a traditional storyline. There isn't a traditional character. No character has any kind of character arc for the most part. Anthony maybe has the most of a character arc, and there's not much of one. Anthony and Sophie, the girl, who's in it for maybe a combined four minutes, most of these characters don't have a character arc from beginning to end. They go on this journey, they learn something, they become different out of it. This does not really have a main storyline. Besides, the plot of this story is a bull gets loose and wreaks havoc on this town. This um, very native tribal town, lower class town where you have homes that are glorified shacks in some places, other homes that are a lot nicer, homes that are cinder blocks and walls of curtains sometimes and wood with, uh, they, de they, de they depend greatly on the land for plants, for the animals, for the chickens and whatnot. But you, basically you have this man named Varky, I believe his word name was, and he was running a meat business where they would slaughter an animal and then they would chop it all up and they would sell it at the meat market. And it talked, again, bits and pieces of this movie. You get a story from bits and pieces of this movie from really paying attention. And I usually pay attention to every movie I watch, but I really wanted to pay attention to understand this one. And it had said earlier on before these meat slaughters came in that the town wasn't as crazy, that people weren't so dependent on meat. But now so many people were dependent on meat. And they were, I mean, it was crazy. It was bonkers. All these people there yelling, almost like an auction house trying to get some of that meat, begging the guy, hey, you don't give me enough. Give me some more of those scraps. Give me some bones for the dog. Give me this or that. And these, these guys, I mean, these sweaty guys and these blood-infested shirts from working are just chopping down meat. As I'm watching that and I'm thinking about the pandemic going right now, I'm like, man, those things aren't very sanitary. But it was, they would slaughter an animal. And then they would sell all the meat, like I was saying, and like every little bit. This guy says, I gave extra liver to you. And so these people have been dependent on meat. And me, I love meat, so I understand that. We have meat at least once a day on average. Some days we might go without some meat if, you know, whatever happenstance. But I like meat. And so I understand that. But in this film, they go to slaughter the bull for that next day early in the morning. And the bull gets loose. And the meaning of the word jalikatu actually means um, like a, a ceremony or an event of men trying to grab a loose bull. So it's very literal in the title. But the entire time, this bull becomes almost like the monster in this movie. He's not superhuman or not supernatural. It's just a bull. A bull that has no rules. A regular natural bull going around, destroying crops, destroying trees that are growing different types of um, food and fruits and destroying homes and destroying people as it's going through and it becomes this monster movie to a small degree where the bull they're they're trying to hunt down the bull like a suspenseful film and then it comes out of nowhere and it was hilarious in a way because you would have these groups of men and you see these guys they're like all oh, macho oh, i'm gonna get that bull i'm so big and tough watch what i can do honey i'm gonna go get it and they would have their ropes or they'd have their weapons and they'd have their spears and they're ready to go and they're hunting down this bull, spending hours trying to hunt down this bull. And then the bull would show up and they were just completely helpless. And I don't blame them. I would be completely helpless too. But they they wanted to prove their machismo by going there and attacking that bull. 
but then once the bull was around, most of them would run away, or they would, the most lame attempts to try to get ropes around his horns, or to throw the spears at that bull, and that bull just kept trucking along. And I had never seen a movie like this, where that was the entire movie, is them chasing that bull, but there's a lot that's going on in this film. When I say that's the only plot line in this movie, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not saying that because I said this is a movie. I think this is a lame movie. It's not. It's a very different film. This is probably the most unique film I've ever seen, and that's me being completely honest. I could not predict what was going to happen. I cannot relate it to any other movie that I've seen because what you have is this... Um, Again, it's, it's obvious when you think about it, but it's subtle when you're watching it. The stark comparison of who really is the beast. Is man the beast or is the bull the beast? Who is acting more beast-like? When we think about beasts, and the, the way I'm using it right now is, is a creature with little intelligence who has um, these natural beast-like intentions, or um, not intentions, but instincts. And when this bull gets loose, these men in this village, in this area, in this town, they just become less and less human and become more and more beast-like as they're trying to chase after this bull. And they, they don't have too much intelligence behind it. They're just going after it um, without really thinking. And they're getting more and more extreme with, with them trying to show how brave they are and how manly they are without really thinking about it. And so let's talk about a few of the characters because that's basically the main plot line of the story. You have a character, Anthony. And Anthony was my least favorite character. He'd probably be Gabe's favorite if he watched this movie because this guy was a creep. This guy was a punk. And he, you learn through flashbacks that he works at the meat place and so did this other character. I can't remember his name. Something Chan... Um, Kuda Chan. Kuda Chan and Anthony worked at the meat market and they were the slaughterers and they cut the meat and helped sell it. And they had a competition with this girl, Sophie. And it was really, it was really Kuda Chan and Sophie obviously liked each other and Anthony was jealous. And so he framed Kuda Chan for stealing sandalwood from a church. And he, he kind of drugged him up so he'd sleep long throughout the night. And so when they come and got him, he was there. And waking up like what's going on and he got them all riled up before then and so they arrested him they kicked him out they banished him out of the town basically for doing that and then so we see him coming back i'm not sure how much longer it was later a year a few years a few months whatever it was he comes back as the hero because he's going to slay the beast he's going to capture the bull because somehow he's maybe because that's what he did when he was working for the meat people was he would capture these animals he knew how to do it and you Anthony sees him come back and he's just not happy about it. Anthony, this whole time, he's in love with this Sophie girl who, until the very end, she shows no interest in him. I'm not even sure if they eventually got married, maybe, and she just couldn't stand him. Who knows? But it wasn't until the very end when she felt like he was going to be the conquering hero and he was going to get the credit for capturing the bull that she actually th showed him a little bit of love. And that actress, as little screen time as she had, Santhi Balachandran, Chandran, she actually did a really good job portraying her disgust for him and then her appreciation of him. So that was pretty cool. You had some creepy people in this. There's another storyline that really was kind of a waste to me, but was this guy who was so happy for his daughter's wedding and he wanted to have this huge feast and he really wanted to show off and he had to have some bull meat, but there wasn't going to be any bull meat because the bull was loose and so he'll get some chicken and he's fighting with this guy to get that last chicken. Um, his storyline was, was, was kind of interesting, was kind of boring, but I feel like... It, it was in there because the director wanted to and the screenwriter wanted to show us another side of man, another way that man is like a beast. It's like a creature where you got the peacock showing off the feathers, and that's the most important thing is just showing off for other people and not really being reasonable and thinking there's a bull on the loose that could come into our land and attack us at any time, and you're so worried about getting this food and getting this feast and going out there and getting that stuff. Um, but Anthony's our main character. And so he wants to capture the bull. He doesn't want Kuda Chan to. And so he's going after her. And there's this point where the bull has landed in the well. And to me, this was the most interesting part of the movie in a lot of ways because you have the bull in the well. 
And this place isn't full of an arsenal of guns, but they have spears, they have other weapons. I have no idea why they didn't just keep throwing... And you can see some spears being thrown down and they would fall flat. I get that. But someone who knows how to throw a spear or throws, knows how to throw a tomahawk or a knife or some, kill that bull. And I'm not trying to promote killing animals, but in the movie, that's what they want to do so they can slaughter and they can sell the meat. So why not just kill that bull in the well? They didn't do that. They had build up this whole pulley system and this these beams up and they pulled the the bull up as it was still alive they put planks so it can stand and then when it started to rain and they weren't able to hold the ropes they were surprised that when the bull got loose that he got loose to me i'm like what are you guys doing even when he's up there throw the spear take him out eliminate the issue you've had i mean so many businesses these local businesses and merchants their areas are destroyed they talk about how they lost all this money and they lost their business from this animal. Take that animal, take that threat out, and then pull it up. Or when it's pulled up, take it out and then move it out of the side, and you don't have these issues. But, of course, it gets loose, and we're continuing on. And at some point, the bull has like all these spears stuck into it, and it's just still going. It's that unstoppable object. And man's desire to, I will be able to be the one to achieve it. And it's to their own detriment. Eventually, I'm skipping to the very end here because, again, there's not a lot of character arcs going on. Kuda Chan's trying to get some um, vengeance and um, not, I always think of this word. I can't think of this word. I always forget this word. But trying to get his name reclaimed by capturing the bull. And Anthony's trying to impress Sophie and the people. And he claims that he had captured the bull in the well. It got out. Eventually, he follows the bull down to this other valley in the in the village. And he goes to it, and he wants to claim anyone that comes by. I was the one that captured it. I captured it. I captured it because it was stuck in this mud, almost like quicksand. But this really thick mud, it was stuck there, and it couldn't get out. And so anyone that's coming down trying to claim the credit for it, he's telling all, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. And they're like, forget you. They go after it. So he goes after the bull and jumps on top of it, almost like he's protecting like a, a child or a stuffed animal or something. And then everyone else is coming into it. And at this point... Their cray state is so high, they have transitioned completely to that beast-like creature that they no longer are using their senses or using their brains, and they're just, they're seeing something, and they're going after it. It's like a dog chasing a cop car or something. They're just, without thinking, they're just going after it. And you had this crazy scene. It reminded me of World War Z, where the zombies are climbing on top of each other to get over that wall. You have this crazy scene where they're all dogpiling on Antony and the bull, and there's really no sense to it. But they're just dogpiling and climbing and creating this huge human, this huge human wall. That was an amazing shot. There was this so many amazing shots in this movie. The cinematographer was fantastic. But there was this amazing shot where you have the pile of human bodies and they're still moving, so that was pretty crazy. And then you have these droves of guys running in from down the hills to the center of this human wall. And then you have like the sunset, or maybe it was the sunrise, and you have the ambers and the purples in the sky it was an amazing shot and these torches coming down and these guys just going towards this beacon of human flesh which was just crazy and then at the very end you have Anthony in the middle of that and he's trying to get loose and you had this amazing amazing shot with the mud and the hands and his face and it's these people have gone so crazy they have turned so much into that creature into that beast it looks like they start gnawing on his neck and his face, and they're just like this ah crazy state where they're just going after him as if he's the bull, and they're relaying that frustration onto him. So, like I said, there was a little bit of that cannibalism there at the end. But when this movie was over, I mean, it was like, what in the world was that? I mean, that was literally what I was thinking. Like, what did I just see? How was the movie over? And then they go to the very end, and they show you how these cavemen, Neanderthals, are going after a bull. And then, you know, obviously, if I didn't get it before, boom, the director is making that start, that trash comparison um, to start comparison, excuse me, to how these people, how man, especially men, you know, the machismo and whatnot, testosterone, are acting just like the Neanderthals of old, Neanderthals of old, the cavemen <laughs> of old. And I thought that was really eloquent. I thought that was really nice to be able to get that. For dummies like me to really get the full picture but this movie i mean it, it was insane like i said not too many character arcs and for me characters are a big part of a film um storyline is a second huge part of the film acting is really important there was acting in this but there wasn't like 
out of control acting performances. It's hard for me to say I would recommend this movie to my friends and family because it's such a weird film. But what I will say is I'll recommend it to anyone that really wants to be moved, really wants a visual experience, really wants if they want to see carnage on display, you want and it's not a it's not a gory film. It's not a violent film. But when I say carnage, it's just the the man's inner ego being displayed. You had so many times where you had people dancing in the streets to music. You had other people who were lamenting their business being destroyed. You have Kuda Chan who's breaking the metal handle of a bucket, chopping it up with a butcher knife and putting it into his gun for bullets. I thought that was, holy cow. So many crazy scenes and so many small nuances that if you weren't paying attention, you were going to miss it right away. But in my opinion, I feel like the director is telling the tale of to be careful, to use your brain, to not be so quick to um, follow your testosterone, so to speak, and your ego, but do not become that beast. And maybe if you you are what you eat, right? Um, this movie was crazy, absolutely crazy. It was definitely, like I said, the most unique film experience I've ever had. Um, I am glad it was 93 minutes because my brain was hurting after that, trying to understand and make the connections. But I feel like I understand that beginning part with the ticking and the human eyes and the insects making that comparison. But I'm going to go ahead. It says right here on Wikipedia, megalomania, definitely. Lewdness and absurd frenziness, absolutely for this film. I It's hard to grade this film because I've got to be honest. And I can't say I was blown away and I thought this was the greatest movie I've ever seen in my life. But I was blown away by thinking what in the world was that? That was so unique. That was so original. And I love originality. So I'm going to give this film a B plus, And that's probably going to upset a lot of people. But I've got to be honest. This is not a film I think I'm ever going to watch again. Neither was this a film that I disliked at all. It was just weird. It was just crazy. It was unlike anything I've ever seen before. Maybe 10 years from now, when other people copy his style and bring us movies like this, maybe I'll be able to go back to Jolly Katsu and say that was the first, that was a masterpiece. In a lot of ways, it is a masterpiece because it was original. It was visually stunning. Um, the score definitely intensified the tension in the film and the suspense. Um, the actors, they were so good at playing that tribal, native, man, beast-like ego inside on display. And just forgetting everything else and just going with my spear, I'm going to take that animal out. You had the guy who was like, hey guys, just calm down, it's okay. And then his trees were destroyed and he was wanting for blood after that for the beast. Um, one cool thing was there was a note that there was no animals hurt in this, that all of that was done through training or through dolls and whatnot. So that was pretty impressive because I couldn't tell about a fake beast whatever whatsoever. And again, I did like the monster-esque aspect where the bull was like that monster in the bushes and you're trying to figure out, oh, here it comes. And it definitely made you scared when it came after someone because you can just imagine the kind of damage an animal with those horns can do to somebody. And then it was funny because the monster later on in the movie was no longer the bull, but was the men, the, uh, the the men of the town. They were now the monster in the monster movie. And Antony suffered the fate of that uh, monster that he helped create. So, I mean, it's just, it's very, it's very crazy. This is a film that is going to be so subjective if you've never seen it before. Um, I don't know. It's made me think so much that I think my grade for this film, I'm going to switch it to an an A minus? I don't know. Because it's just so nuts. It's not a film that I was just like, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen. But there's just so much craziness to it. There's so much deep layers to it that once you start unservicing that you realize there's more and more layers. So I, my hat definitely goes off to the director. A minus is my official grade for this film because it was very unique and original. Let me know what you think about this movie. Let me know if it was just okay for you. Let me know if you agree with my thoughts about how my conflict is with grading it. Let me know what I missed because I'm sure there's a whole lot I missed. And I know this review is almost one third of the time it took for the movie to be made, but there's so much deep content to it where hopefully that's justified. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. And don't forget to come back for some more reviews from Born Reviews. And until next time, adios.